Hey there, I'm Daniel. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to capture information in voice flow. So one of the most basic actions you're gonna do for your assistant. Now, to start off, uh, we'd recommend checking out one of the templates that's built into the tool. So retail purchases or support chatbot or any of the other ones, they really show you in depth examples. And we're actually gonna use one of those to show you today. So we're gonna go into the support chatbot one and we're gonna go into the talk to sales workflow. And you can see here that I'm capturing information in a couple of different ways. So what is your work email? We're capturing that into a variable called user email. Your full name uh, we're capturing and then your company name we're capturing as well. So let's go ahead and rebuild this. And now whenever you want to capture information into a variable, so into something that you're gonna reuse later on, you're gonna go ahead and use the listen step. So let's go ahead and just rebuild what we've got at the bottom here on top. So we're gonna say, what is your work email address? And now we're going to link this up and let's add some more rules to this. Now, in the capture step that I just dragged out, there's two ways to capture things. One of them is you can capture the entire user reply to a variable. So that can be the last utterance variable or something else. Now the last utterance variable in VoiceFlow is the last thing that a user has typed into your assistant. So that's automatically saved. And you've also got some other built-ins like last response as well. That's the last thing the assistant said. So what it's doing right now is you can capture the entire user reply into this variable last utterance and then save that for later. But because I want to capture a specific piece of information like an email address, I'm actually going to use an entity. So in this case, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit create new entity and we're going to call this entity email. We're going to select the data type to be email. And what the data type does just helps the uh, system understand what type of information to capture. So the email one has already been pre-trained with a bunch of different examples of email. You can add on more values if you want here. So for example, if you're doing something custom like product names, for example, for your business, you can do custom and then actually add in the values here to train the assistant on what it should be capturing. But we'll just do email. We're gonna hit create entity. And so now we've created this entity called email. That's also a variable. So entities and e variables are, are very similar. Um, but an entity is actually filled when it's like pulling information out of a sentence. So we'll just add a text step here so we can see what this looks like. Email. And now let's go ahead and run a prototype. Now, one thing to note is when you add a new uh, entity or uh, to capture information, you need to train your agent. And so this is just gonna train the assistant to say, okay, cool, the user's gonna try to capture an email here. Let's look at the sample data and actually make sure we can pull out an email address. Now, this isn't really important if a user's just putting in their email, but a lot of times users will do things like my name or my email is Daniel at VoiceFlow. You don't wanna capture the rest of it. You want the assistant just to pick out the email part. So if I say my email is Daniel at VoiceFlow.com, you'll see that it was able to pull out just the email, which was Daniel at VoiceFlow.com. So pretty easy. Um, and now let's kind of go in and look at some other examples. So within the capture step here, you can see that there's also a no match path. So if, for example, a user does not put in an email, you can do a no match to say, please enter an email address. And this is gonna prompt the system to say, hey, I didn't see an email in what a user sent. Uh, we're gonna prompt them again to say, please enter an email address. And so one thing I would recommend is that the capture step is best at capturing one piece of information at a time. So if you wanna capture multiple, you can string them together like this. So what's your email? what's your full name and what's your company name. If you try to capture too many within the same block, you're gonna have issues. Once you've actually captured that piece of information, like email, this is where you can actually start to use this variable in different parts of your flow. So if you have an API call, like you're sending this to a database somewhere and you can see in the how to make an API call video, you can now send this email variable to uh, a database. Or in the example down here that I'll walk through, we're actually using AI to validate if this email is a work email or a personal email. So to do that, and this is the example I showed off in the first video as well, you're gonna use the set AI step, and this is gonna allow you to send variables or send information to an AI model to be able to respond back to you. So you can see here that the prompt I used was you're an email validator, um, and just see the email below if it is a work email or not. And you can see here that we're actually gonna add in the user email as well for it to evaluate. And so if I hit preview here and I type in something like daniel at gmail.com, it's gonna turn back with a one, which means that it's a uh, personal email. And if I say daniel at voiceflow.com, that's gonna come back with a zero, which means it's a personal email. 
So then I can use something like logic afterwards to be able to check and actually say, okay, if the uh, variable is zero or one, we're gonna go proceed to the next step. So rather than kind of show you this, uh, I would encourage you to check out this template, which is the support chatbot template. Um, if you don't have it in your workspace, you can also find it on our website in the template section. And this is gonna walk you through uh, the example of what we've done here, which is just capture a bunch of pieces of information and then actually provide the user with a card that allows them to choose a time.